Mercedes-Benz. <laughs> Why am I playing with Mercedes-Benz? I don't know. I guess because I got that one inside the, whatever you call that building, garden shed, with 437,000 miles. So I saw this on eBay and I figured, well, doesn't everybody deserve a Mercedes that has a peg leg? I just watched a couple videos. I watched Mr. Hoovy's video. That was pretty cool at the end with his daughter shifting that five-speed Ferrari with the gated shifter. My mother bought a bought an Acura a few years ago and it had a, not a gated shifter, but it had a pattern that you had to follow. She says, what an annoying, stupid feature. My brother put a small block in. Actually, it was a dreidel. Put a small block in to keep the pattern kind of straighter. Anyhow, I was watching Hoovy's video. It was kind of cool. Toys R Us may not have gone bankrupt if his daughter Ellie had been doing the speed shifting in one of their stores on a toy. But I also watched Legit Streetcar. He was a fellow in the Midwest, Chicago. Chicago! Chi Town. And he was saying on his AMG, this is not an AMG, but I'm not sure how different an AMG is. Maybe just an overstuffed V8. Anyways, he was saying that on his V8 you can change the regulator and brushes on the back of the Mercedes alternator. And I did not know that. My buddy Nick in South Carolina, y'all, got me a couple alternators for this Mercedes, this C240, which is kind of like an E320, but I don't know why they changed the nomenclature, too confusing for me. And if you do look at various websites, FCP Euro or Rock Auto, you'll see that Mercedes makes a lot of different models, and that's just for the American and Canadian market. But this fellow's alternator failed, and he pulled it off, and he showed, well, on the new one, he showed that you can change the uh, regulator and brushes from the back, and there's lots of room on his, but there is no room on mine, because if I can sneak this phone down here, I've got a big aluminum alloy engine mount bracket right behind the alternator, and I don't think you're going to get your hand down in there. There's one finger's room. Yeah, you might be able to change it if you have really skinny, triple articulated fingers. And speaking of really <laughs> skinny articulated somethings, Hoovy threw down the gauntlet, even though he didn't, he didn't think he had. But he threw down the gauntlet for who has the narrowest butt on YouTube. <laughs> that could get you into trouble. He said he was driving his Ferrari and he couldn't keep his wallet in the back seat, so I commented that it's a Ferrari, it'll fix that overstuffed wallet problem. And then he mentioned that the shifter ball was a piece of chrome-plated whatever or stainless steel and it gets really hot in the sun. And I said, well, you're supposed to keep your girlfriend's panties on top of the shifter ball if you're a good Italian, dumb American. And then he mentioned that Christine was a 1957 Plymouth Fury. It wasn't, it was a 58, which was the first year for dual headlamps and that was only because they weren't allowed by law to be dual headlamps until 19, late 57. So the Lincoln got them, I believe, in 57, maybe even the Rambler. So 58 was the Fury in Christine. And what else did he uh, mention? I mm, guess that covers it. Here's how you check the transmission oil in a Mercedes. You buy one of those on eBay for 12 bucks. I went to the dealer. They wanted to sell it for 40 bucks. It's the same thing. And this car didn't come with an oil dipstick. So my buddy Nick is going to get me one. And that thing's just, uh, this thing, that thing's just sitting around. I'm going to go watch Diesel Mercedes. My buddy in California play with his 240D, the last of the real good tractor Mercedes. Crank that baby up. Not this one. Battery's dead. Parasitic drain.